In front of me is my original X100, and right here is the brand new X100V. Baby, you have come a long way. Okay, so this video about the Fuji X100V isn't really going to be about the Fuji X100V. The camera's been out for a few months now, and if you're interested in this camera, I'm sure you've already watched one of the many videos and read one of the many reviews that are already out about the camera. I'm not going over the specs of the camera, because to be very brutally honest with you, I, I don't know what the specs of the camera are. <laughs> Funny enough, like if you asked me right now, Zach, how many megapixels in the Fuji X100V? Echo, what are the specs of the new Fujifilm X100V camera? Are you looking for Fujifilm X100V camera? Yes. A top result is Fujifilm Digital Camera Silver. You can say, buy it now. Or to hear what other customers think, just say, what are the reviews? What are the reviews? It has a rating of 4.2 stars from 21 customers. Echo, can you read the reviews? Resuming the life-changing magic of tidying up. Barely delays parting with clothes that don't spark any joy. There are stores dedicated solely to loungewear products. So clearly I am the last person you want to come to if you want to know about the technical specs of the camera. I can tell you that it has 20 something odd megapixels. Uh, it goes on from the Fuji X100T to using the larger X uh, battery that all the other X cameras use. It's got a newly designed lens that is sharp as a tack. The coolest upgrade of them all. Look at that. It's just completely flat on the back. But zoop, we got us a tilty screen. Looking at the original X100 and looking at the X100V, uh, it's, it's just astonishing how far this little camera has come. So my review of the camera, thumbs up, a bunch of stars, really like it. It's nice. It's, it's a Fujifilm camera, so it just continues on the excellence that they do, all right? That's my review. So back in November of 2019, Fuji reached out to me and they said, hey, Zach, we've got the new X100 coming out. Would you be interested in doing a promo for it? Pro gear, don't worry about it. And I was like, heck, yes, I do. That would be awesome. So in November, they send me the camera and I had two deadlines I needed to meet for this project. The first deadline was for mid-December. I needed to have photos shot with this camera back to Fuji. My second deadline was for the video itself, and that was due around the first or second week of January, I believe. The thing I love about Fuji is they just send me a camera and they say, go do whatever you want. So I get this camera and I start brainstorming and had no ideas. I probably blew through the first good week and a half just trying to come up with some idea of something to do. One thing that I really wanted to do and started to put some effort into was to find a local hip hop artist who was just coming up in the local hip hop scene. I mean, this is the ATL, this is the 404, this is the birthplace of so many great hip hop artists. I had to find somebody and do like a day in the life of a hip hop artist. A few years back, I got to do a similar sort of project with Migos for Spin Magazine, and that was awesome. And I was thinking, let me kind of do that sort of thing again, but with the new X100. Lo and behold, the worst time to find anybody working on any kind of project is in the middle of December. Nothing, nada. Not a thing. Without going back into my emails, I wanna say that my first deadline was December 20th, somewhere around then, that I needed some pictures made with this camera. I was about five-ish days out from that deadline with nothing lined up. So what did I do? What is a gray-haired, middle-aged male photographer to do? He finds himself a pretty girl to go photograph. 
So I call Gigi up, say, hey, you want to do some pictures? Gigi's like, yeah, absolutely, we'll do pictures. And uh, we traipse off out into the woods on a cold December afternoon with a bunch of smoke bombs. And the thing that I thought, well, well, this is what will make it cool is I'm not going to use strobes or anything like that. So I went to Walmart and I bought three of these and another flashlight. I thought, oh, this will be really cool. I'll go do this whole promotional video with a bunch of like Walmart lights and everyone will think that's cool. But really what it was, was just a stereotypical trope in our industry of a gray haired middle-aged man photographing a young pretty girl. I just pictured that final video being me like, hey there y'all, I've got a new camera and to test it out. I've got a pretty girl here that I'm gonna take photographs of. So join me on my road to the male gaze. Have I really come to this point in my career? So I'd already bought the lights and uh, the smoke bombs and Caleb was in town for the holidays. And so it was Gigi and Caleb and Stacy and I out in the woods, out in our neighborhood. Um, and we had some fun and we took some pictures. <laughs> friends over at Fuji are like, hey, how's the video coming along? And I'm like, ah, uh, mm, yeah, about that video. Oh, uh. Now I knew that at the end of January, I was going to be leading a group of photographers down to Havana, Cuba with the Santa Fe workshops. And I thought, gosh, if I just had, you know, a little more time I could probably shoot a video in Cuba that would be way better than anything that I'm even trying to conceive of here in Atlanta. I was getting really nervous and I finally just fessed up to Fuji and said, look, I started to work on a video here in Atlanta. I don't like how it's coming out. I'm not happy with it. It is gonna be mediocre at best. Is there any way I could have until the end of January? Because I'm going to Havana and I think I could shoot something down there. I finally got the email that said, Zach, we would love to see what you do with the new Fuji X100 in Havana. Um, go for it. Thank you, Fuji. Thank you very much for giving me that extra time so that I would not be another middle-aged, gray-haired photographer standing next to some, you know, pretty 20-something girl going, today I'm going to show you about the new camera. Because honestly, we don't need any more of those videos. I know I have shot them before and probably will shoot them again. There are so many other ways to, to show a camera and what it can do. So I had the green light to extend that deadline to the end of January, to take it down to Havana with me and shoot a promotional video. But this time I had no crew. Like, how am I gonna pull this one off? At the end of last year, I upgraded to the iPhone 11 Pro, which is what you're watching right now, which is shooting this and I got myself a little lightning lavalier mic. If you watch my how to make better videos video here on my channel, you'll see the microphone and all that stuff I'm using. I had a great camera that shot 4K. I had a tripod. I had a microphone. I could figure it out. 
Now, whenever I do a promotional video, I don't ever want it to just be, this is the Fujifilm camera. Look at all the specifications. Look at how amazing it is. Look at all the things it does. These are the five different buttons that I like. Let's walk through the menu system together. I never want to make promotional videos like that. I never try to, to make it camera, camera, camera centric. My hope with promotional videos is that I can throw things into it that are of interest to photographers no matter what brand of camera you use. And I tell you what, the reason I love working with Fuji so much is because they just let me do that. They have always been so great to work with. I love them. I'm not, you know, on a monthly take with Fuji and they send me all this money all the time. I use Fujifilm products because I love Fujifilm products. And this video that you are watching right now is in by no means sponsored by or paid for by Fuji. This is just me. This is just me making a video about a video that I made. Why not? If you want me to do something a little more in depth on this camera, then I'd like to hear from you in the comments below. And I don't want to like go through, these are what the buttons do, and this is the megapixels, and this is how many amperage hours the battery is, and this, this is a focus chart of the lens. Like I have really zero interest in doing that kind of video. But if there's something you'd specifically like to see happen with this camera, and my thoughts, and my take on how to approach something, with this camera, then let me know in the comments below. Many of you may have seen this video. If not, here it is. My name is Zach Arias and I am in Havana, Cuba, and I am shooting with the brand spanking new X100V. One great benefit of traveling with such a small camera is it's not intimidating at all when you pull this thing out. You're just somebody taking some photos with a little camera, but the quality you get is equal to something that's much larger than this. Now when I travel, this is pretty much all I take. A small little think tank bag, and it's got the X100. I use the SP3 printer. I usually carry two or three extra packs of film, some extra batteries, and spacey. And when I don't want to carry all of this, I'll just throw the X100 on a black rapid strap and keep a few extra batteries in my pocket and be on my way. One thing I've been into lately is finding little intersections like this where there's lots of people kind of coming and going and I just will camp out in a spot. I'll find my composition of the basic environment and then I just wait and I watch as people and cars and bicycles and dogs and cats kind of come in and out of the frame and seeing what I can make out of just a simple little scene like this. People think it's a cliche to come to Havana and take pictures of old cars. I love taking pictures of the old cars. They're fantastic. What I challenge you to do is Get all the pictures of cars done out of your way. Look at that cool car, look at that cool car, look at that one. And then start looking at the details. Start seeing if you can stack a part of one car with another car in the background. Or kind of my favorite way to photograph these cars is that there's somehow an element in the background or the foreground of a photo of something else going on. It gives you just a little piece or part 
of this culture, of this classic car culture, but it's not forefront in your photograph. And that for me is what it's about. The camera is the thing I can hide behind as really a shy, introverted person, but I wanna meet people. I wanna hear a little bit about their story. I wanna hear about what they're doing. And the camera is the key to that. The camera is my passport. The camera lets me into places and into people's lives and I get to just hang out and you know, I'm gonna follow this guy on Instagram. I'm gonna stay connected with him. Next time I'm in Havana, I'm gonna look him up and I'm gonna bring him some supplies he needs for his shop. Uh, that's how it works and it's fantastic. There are times when I'm in a situation or in a place where a bunch of school kids suddenly show up while I'm trying to make a video. All right, cool. Take 18 million. What I've learned about myself is that if I'm traveling and I take a bunch of photography equipment with me, all the lenses and the cameras and the lights and all the stuff, then I end up focusing more on photography. I end up focusing more on getting the picture instead of focusing on where I am and taking in the place and experiencing it and making new memories and meeting new people and learning new things. The gear gets in the way of that. And now when I travel, it's exclusively the X100. That's all I need. There are, of course, times when I'm in a situation or at a place and I think, oh, I wish I had a little something wider or I had a, a longer lens for some compression or to get me a little bit closer to something like, say, crashing waves on the Malacon. But what I like is that that limit of a fixed lens for the whole week I've been here has made me have to figure it out. Say, okay, I don't have that wider lens. I don't have that longer lens. There's still pictures to be made. There's still an image to be had. And so I push myself to find that image, to get closer, to stand back further than maybe I normally would, to, to reconsider the frame I'm trying to make. And if I count up all the times where I said, oh, I wish I had, to all the times where I said, I'm glad I'm not carrying all that stuff, the I'm not carrying all that stuff clearly wins.
I've made some friends. At night, this corner of the plaza is just filled with people from the neighborhood, and they just are hanging out, playing dominoes, they're playing music, having a little drink, having some laughs. It's just an awesome way that they end their day. So the first few nights I was here, I just sort of sat at the edge, just watching people and how they interacted. And, and I started to take some pictures and I started handing out some Instax prints. And uh, the next night I bought, brought a case of beer. And I'll tell you what, Instax prints and a case of beer is gonna get you everywhere you need in life sometimes. And now, every night when I'm done with my day and I'm finished with all the stuff I need to do, I just come hang out with all my new amigos and amigas and uh, we sit, we have a drink, we chat about life and it's been like the funnest thing I've done on this trip so far. You go that way. Bravo, bravo, bravo. Gracias, gracias. Muchas gracias, muchas gracias. Muchas, muchas gracias. So thank you so much for watching all the way through the end. Please like, please subscribe, and always please go downstairs and leave me a comment. I read every single comment. I love to get your feedback. I love to get your critique. And I love to get, you know, ideas that you may have that you would like to see content on my channel here. All right, Carl, is that it? That's it. That was 32 minutes and 20 seconds.